All right, what I have going on here, this is all scrap that I had. I just kind of cut it down real quick, so I don't really have no specific measurements with this forge. I'm just placing the blocks on, seeing how I want to lay everything out before I start drilling and welding and just work out just the little details. As you can see, it's just going to be a small little gas forge. Nothing big, big enough just to do knives, uh, my own hardware, my own tooling, you know, just small little proje projects. Now with this video, I'm going to uh, kind of do a couple of small little reviews on things. First of all, the burner and where I got that from and uh, uh, when drill press, which I've seen a lot of reviews on YouTube about, but they were way off on it. So right here, I'm just kind of marking it off with some chalk, you know, just uh, so this way I can weld it all together eventually. You know, I'm just gonna be welding the bottom and the top, and then it's gonna get bolted together with threaded rods. So this way I can take it apart. You don't have to weld it. You can just have it all compressed, but I just prefer to weld it. And I'm using a 110 volt uh, Lincoln welder. It's not a bad welder. I'm used. To, I'm a fabrication guy, and I'm used to working with the big Millers 350Ps. But this is this isn't a bad welder for the for you know a small little shop just to do just small little welds. Even when you get done welding, and mostly when you get done tacking, make sure you square everything up. Uh, this particular project, I'm not overly picky with because. I work full time. I just want to get it done. I'm not one of those little prima donna YouTubers that are out there that has like their spouse go to work and they stay home and just make videos. All right, my burner came. I ordered it off of eBay from TNS Customs, which if you're going to make your own, or I should say, if you're going to buy your own, I would order it from them. It works great, which you'll see. I had a couple hiccups that were mainly because of me and they responded to the emails ASAP, which is great. So right now I'm just kind of checking over the parts cause I just got them. I never uh, bought one before making sure that the threads are all good. Uh, all the fittings are good, which you want to do with any project that you work with any kind of hardware, anything you just want to just check just to make sure it works to avoid a hiccup later. Here I'm just going to be laying out the, the bottom of the forge and the top of the forge because I'm going to be drilling uh, 3 8 inch holes in it and which is which I'm going to lead into with this whole when drill press which is going to be coming up here in a minute or so a lot of reviews on there says oh it doesn't go through metal well what, what, what's happening is that they're not using a small bit with a high RPMs. For example, I start at the highest or the, the, the thickest bit I'll go is 3 16 and I'll run a high RPM. Anything after that, you slow the RPMs down and you, and you put more pressure on it to get those burning chips out and use cutting oil. I cut through with this drill press all, all the way up to a quarter inch already. Very impressed with it. You just got to be careful with YouTube of people saying, you know, giving their reviews, mostly if they won't really do it as a profession. So just a little heads up with that. Great drill bit. Always step up with your bits. Start off with an eighth inch, skip a couple bits and, you know, and then drill and then skip a couple bits, you know, and just keep working your way up. It's called stepping, stepping up with your drill bits. And you just slow down the RPMs after you get past, you know, with three sixteenths, which I always use an eighth. Sometimes I use a three sixteenths. And of course, you, you want to make sure your bits are, are, are nice and sharp. Now you can do this all with a hand drill, but you want a hand drill that has a really high RPM. I would not recommend using a battery one. I would use a corded one with a, the highest RPMs that you can find, and then you can just work the trigger to lower your RPMs.
Just like with anything, it doesn't matter if it's metalworking, if it's woodworking, always, always check your squareness, check your measurements. It, it'll save a big headache down the road because you don't want to get three quarters down the project and all of a sudden go, oh shit, I messed up here. And then you have to start over or you have to improvise. It just makes life a lot easier. As you can see here, I, I even put little notes on there of how far in I'm gonna come, how far out. I'll just put just just a little little notes on there just to make it a little bit easier because once once you start most of you're working with multiple pieces and they're all laid out and scattered all around, it's really easy to get yourself all confused and jammed up. And that's something that you want to try to avoid. So like I've like I've been stressing, take your time with the whole layout save yourself that big headache. Unfortunately, I'm using this Bora mag magnetic uh, square. The reason why is because I took all my other squares to work and you don't want to use a magnetic because it, it gets a lot of chips and, and everything on it. I only use, I basically use that for woodworking. I was not very happy that I had to use it. Luckily, luckily I'm doing a talk over because you would hear me kind of cursing to myself about it, but it is what it is. And of course, we've got more drilling, which this is actually kind of good for people who are looking for a drill press. You know a reasonable one I think I paid two hundred and thirty dollars for this and you can see that it drills through metal so there's verification in case if you're looking for a drill press and you're looking at a one at least now you know that it does drill through metal and not like what I previously stated with some youtubers out there oh it's only good for wood they don't know what they're talking about I'm double checking my hardware, just like I did with the burner, making sure that I grabbed all the right hardware, that, that the bins at the box store wasn't mixed up with thin threads, with wide threads. Uh, usually I buy bulk. In this case I didn't, and I should have, but you know, it is what it is. This little ratchet wrench though is pretty nice. So I got this from Harbor Freight, and I'm not a big Harbor Freight guy but it was like $25 for like five or six wrenches. I would recommend getting, getting this for the shop, mostly for the price. Right here, I'm just kind of going over everything. I fixed that gap up at the top of the bricks there. And speaking of the bricks, make sure you get fire bricks. Don't be a dumbass and go get regular bricks because there's gonna be moisture in them. And then once you have such a high heat, it's gonna explode. And basically you're just gonna mess yourself up. So, you know, don't go buy everything off of this video. You know, just research it, go online, watch other videos, you know, and then come up with your own thing. Now, right here, I'm just drilling out the hole for the burner. And then I'm gonna be welding a plate so this way I can keep that burner up a little bit. As you can see right here, so this way, the, the burner, I don't have to worry about it falling out. It'll be nice and secure. I can light it, be done with it, and start forging. Now, as old timers used to always say, don't do dumb, I did dumb here. I ended up putting end caps on, but I got a hold of TNS Customs, and they told me, no, you don't put end caps on the sides. That's where the airflow is, because I was having that problem that you've seen above. So took that off and here we go now we have a jet engine burner and it gets nice and hot in there it doesn't take long to heat up the steel there's going to be a clip coming up here i think this here was about a quarter inch if not thicker and it probably took about 30 seconds to heat it up i'm just testing out the forge making sure everything's all good with it and there are no gas leaks I wanted to see how it was heated. I don't have my little crappy anvil yet mounted up. You know, right now I'm in the process of setting this up. So this way I can eventually make my own hardware, my own tooling. So with that said, uh, 
do your research. Please share, subscribe. You're going to see more videos with blacksmithing, woodworking, all different types of videos. Uh, try to help my channel out. I'm not sponsored by anyone in here. I'm not interested in being sponsored. I'm not interested of staying home and sending my wife to work. I'm just here to just making some videos so, so people can learn something and go out there and start making something.